Yeah, well, you don't get the opportunity to come into the dip at Governor's Bridge because it's a closed road now, even though there's access through from the top. And uh, it's always been retained and uh, not been maintained, I must admit. It's pretty basic down the bottom here, but there's a couple of little points I'd like you to have a look at. Coming down onto the, uh, onto the dip at the bottom here at Governor's. And uh, in the old days, you're allowed to sit on that bank all around there, and you were allowed on the other side of the wall here as well. Uh, but certainly those two big stones, which are normally painted white, just to, uh, to, to kind of highlight them. What a feeling that every person who's ever competed on the TT course has had to go round this for the final time. Ultra careful, just to make sure Occasionally there was a very, very tight sequence between first and second and third and fourth and you had to be as good as possible getting round the bottom and out. And in the old days with the, the bikes, the single cylinders and even going back to the sidecars with Freddie Dixon and the boys, uh, certainly it was a, an art to get it. But not many people have spectated down here. That's, uh, that's one thing about it. How old is this area? We'll be back in a minute to tell you. What, what's the date on the tombstone there? Because that this well, this was the the main drag into Douglas Top Road when he came in in '27. How many people would know that plaque there? Bottom gear, slipping the clutch. Probably having to slip the clutch on the G50s and the AGS 7 Rs. The MV, four-cylinder MV, absolutely dead quiet when it was right on the apex of the corner and then it would chime up as he took it then to go round the left-hander at the bottom and you'd be sat on the hedge and just knowing that was going to be a big handful from Surtees, Hartle, Dickie Dale, all the boys who were on the uh, exotic Italian machinery of the era uh, would be given it coming out of the dip at Governor's Bridge and onto Glen Crutchley Road and then you'd be able to, if the wind conditions were right, to hear every gear change then and holding it flat against the stop all the way down Bray Hill before they had to roll it back to take into Quarter Bridge. Just standing here today just brings all those memories back. In fact, if I try hard enough, I can probably, despite the traffic, just uh, recall all those magic moments. Every picture tells a story, they say. The Alf Grey collection contains many photographs, uh, as I say, mainly in and around Parkfield on the cliffs and the start finish in Governor's Bridge. And a lovely little forward dedicated to the memory of Jeff Cannell, who sadly died during the preparation of this book. The Suzuki team in their first TT. They'll have gone round the dip here at Governor's Bridge. Sidecars have been part of my life as well and uh, again in the early days it was when they, they missed the dip out at Governor's Bridge and didn't come down round here. It was only in 1960 that they reinstated the full mountain course. Eric Oliver was favourite to win on the Norton would you believe but he had a crash at Guthrie's and didn't compete. Germans were on the right hand side and you can see that graphically in that. So they had to work harder at Governor's Bridge than the British who just the passenger just hopped over the back. The actual German passengers, George Arbecker and Hermann Hahn there, pictured, uh, he had to work hard. But once they got it onto power down into the dip here, the roles were reversed. And then, of course, the Germans had the advantage that uh, coming out of the dip at uh, Governor's Bridge, that they would be uh, in, in prime position for that. Yeah, they're all there. Every picture is a memory. Where are they now? Just another aside too, the first ever lady to compete in the TT was Inga Stoll, who was passenger for a sidecar driver called Jacques Rion. And again, they didn't come down the dip here at Governor's Bridge, but certainly my memory of uh, watching and being kind of intrigued at how a lady could become involved basically in what has been a man's sport, it certainly isn't the case now and uh, some very, very quick riders about, Maria Costello and Jenny Tinmouth. Roy Moore's Mountain Memories. Hope I'm not boring you. But uh, how would you think that a photograph taken in the dip at Governor's Bridge would cause a divorce? 
Well, those of you who are old enough will remember Joe's Bar and Alf Gray was my next door neighbour, would you believe, at, uh, at Park Avenue. And I knew he was into photography and there is a book out called The Elf Gray Collection. And one of the photographs, uh, and Howard Gray has given us permission to, to kind of relate the story, is of Dickie Dale on the motor guzzy at Governor's Bridge going round. And you'll see that there's not too many people in the background, but there's a lot of couples there all sat on the back. And when he was running Joe's Bar, as a bit of an aside, uh, Alf Gray used to put TT photographs up for, for sale. And they worked out at about a pound each, which in those days was, was quite substantial. I think the year for this was 57, so a pound would be a lot of money. And this chap came in and said, uh, he said, the photo you've got there of Dickie Dale and the dip at Governor's Bridge, he said, could I have 10 copies? And he said, taken aback because he never had an order like that, he said, well, he said, uh, 10 copies is going to cost you a lot. He said, it'll be about 10 pound. He said, I don't mind, I don't mind. So he said, uh, I don't mind you asking. He said, what's the story behind it? He said, well, one of those ladies in the background, he said, is my wife. And he didn't say which one. And he said, allegedly, she was on the island with her girlfriends to watch the TT. He said, I've had my suspicions for a while that the fella, and he didn't point him out, alongside, he said, is a lover. And he said, it's just been proven by that photograph, he said, so the 10 pound will be a small price to pay for 10 copies to give to my lawyers, he said, and divorce proceedings will be underway very, very shortly indeed. So thanks to Howard and, and the late Alf Gray for, for that. In 1965, a bit of an ugly Italian came to ride on the island called Giacomo Agostini. I don't know what the girls saw in him really. But uh, he stayed up at the Douglas Bay Hotel simply because the owner was a chap called Leslie Ranieri who was of Italian descent and who actually competed in the Manx Grand Prix himself. And uh, certainly in a quiet moment he popped down to Joe's Bar like many of the TT riders did at the time because if you were having a trip through the street at that particular time well then having your photograph taken at Joe's Bar uh, it was part and parcel of, of the holiday. I'm led to believe that Howard Gray has the majority of the negatives, because it would be black and white, they would be negatives, in his safe keeping. But certainly if you printed a few out, you would probably get every TT rider from those golden era of the late 50s, early 60s, who uh, was, a, was a patron, if you can call it that, of uh, Joe's Bar in Strand Street, Douglas. <laughs> I went up through the hedge like this. John Hartle parked the bike against the pavement right at the end of 3rd Avenue. And that's what it looked like when it was ablaze and they'd managed to come from Governor's Bridge. There was, I can remember like an explosion as the tank went up and a big shoot of flame going up there and me stood here. And that is me there 